Darned. <laughs> I think it seems to be working a little bit better now, but... Okay. Uh, yeah, so I wanted to start with just kind of like what, what's changed since the last time we talked. Um, and one of the major things we've changed is if you are going to a merchant's store and you're not inputting any search terms, the default sort option, uh, given you haven't already changed it at some other point in time, is now new as first. Uh, we decided to make that change because a lot of times when going to someone's store, um, we were showing a lot of older items that weren't really relevant anymore. And many times when people go and shop at someone's marketplace web store, the first things they see uh, tends to influence what they're going to do. So we wanted to make it that if someone hasn't already set their preferences by default, that they would be seeing the newest first. And it so far, no, it hasn't been live for that long, but so far from you know, the data that we normally look at, it, it seems to be uh, in a good space. Um, but we're always open to feedback from anybody who has feedback on that. Uh, another thing that we changed was we increased the cart size. We had a limit on how many items you could store in your cart. I, I can't remember if it was nine or 10, but it was, it was something around that area. Um, yes, 10, thank you. And we increased it to 99. So you're no longer limited in how many things you can, you can check out with. And uh, it seems like this has been well received well, or this has been well received so far. Uh, some other changes that we made was we had a page cap on search results um, last time we met, and it was capping at around 50. Uh, that's been removed, so now it'll paginate up to as many results that are returned in the search query. And we've also made it to where if you're not using advanced Boolean search terms like quotes or um, asterisks or something like that, the search will actually string together your terms. So if you were to search something like blue shirt, it would pull up all terms that result with blue and shirt instead of all terms that could be blue or shirt. So that, that's what we've changed so far. You can still use or terms. So only apply if you're putting in a very basic search term. One of the other things I kind of wanted to talk about is things we've got upcoming. Uh, we're currently working on, we, we've done this before, but it's been quite some time where we do a little bit of spring cleaning where we remove old items that are no longer, well, remove isn't really the right term to use, like unlist old items that are no longer really being sold or viewed by people. Uh, so specifically what we're doing is uh, if, you're, if the merchant hasn't logged in in two years and uh, a specific product hasn't sold in one year, that product's going to be unlisted. We will also be changing it to where if Emergent hasn't logged in in two years and the store hasn't sold anything in one year, that the store will also be disabled. So this means that if a product hasn't sold within the past year, that product listing will remain available on the marketplace. But if a store has products which have sold within the past year, it also will remain enabled. So yeah, we're trying to make a good effort to keep a lot of the items that are currently on the marketplace uh, up to date and remove older items. Because from community feedback, we received that a lot of times people find old, not relevant items or merchants that are no longer active, aren't able to provide customer support or redelivery. So this is something that we wanted to try to help change. And we'll be blogging about that specific change soon, and you'll have a data when that's going to go active.
I believe you do receive a notification, but let me double check with the team on that. Uh, something else that we're also doing is we're switching over uh, how our email verifications work. So if you have an account that has an unverified email, you can still use the marketplace normal, right? Like with any, without any restrictions, we're going to be switching over to, you need to have your emails verified just for security purposes. And we'll be notifying everyone when that change is coming and who needs to make sure that their email is verified. It's not 2FA, it's simply uh, we'll send you an email and you just have to click a link to verify that you actually have access to that email. So we're just verifying that you actually own that email address and you're actually using it. Uh, what is the issue for gifting in by now? Uh, I see. So if you're trying to gift someone something, you're kind of used to clicking the buy now button. And if you hit buy now, you will end up actually being bought for yourself. Okay. Yeah, I can see how that would be a big, a big problem. Definitely talk to the team about ways we can fix that. else I wanted to talk about real quick uh, is we got a lot of questions about how relevancy works for search or if you're looking at someone's default store. Um, we can't reveal everything about it, but one of the things I do want to say is make sure you title your product exactly what your product is. Like so, for example, a technique that merchants used to use was they would put their shop title in the actual product title. Since we no longer include merchant store searches in the product store search uh, that's now only in the merchant store search it actually is making it harder for people to find you so if you have something that's like a poker table for example you should be naming it as close to what the actual item actually is so like poker table We're trying to um, match to our best ability what the person's searching for and what the actual item is. So the, the, the best thing you can do is really try your best to tie it to exactly what the item is. Do not recommend putting your store name in your item's title. I see a lot of people will put like, uh, for example, CJ and then the item of their title or the, the title of their item, right? And CJ would be the store name. That, that used to work when we, if, if you remember back, um, I think this might've been almost two months ago, 
we made a change to search where you used to be able to put in a merchant store name into the product search to be able to find merchant stores. We always had another search that was specific to merchant stores that people did use. So what people were doing was they were naming the titles of their product with their store name as well to try to come up more often in search. And since we you know, have those two split now, searching for a merchant store won't work in product search. So make sure that you're naming your product exactly what your product is. Yes, we are going to make a blog post, uh, also a forum post, to talk about a lot of these things. One of the other things I want to talk about uh, that I've seen a lot of questions about is your best selling sort on your merchant store. How sometimes it won't match if you look at your best selling report. One of the things that, um, well, one of the reasons why that is, is we look at best selling across the entire marketplace. So the best selling report that you're pulling up is just specifically for your store. That's why they don't match sometimes. Now, with all that being said, uh, we will continue to watch uh, on the current metrics that we have, and then also user feedback, resident feedback on 
how things are working now that we've made some changes and we'll make adjustments going forward. So one of the questions I wanted to ask around um, search is, do, you, do we feel like it's really important for users to, be, or I should say residents, to be able to search for merchants in product search? Interesting, okay. We are looking into ways to make keywords more useful. For the uh, bug you just linked, I'm guessing the issue here is in some Discord communities you may be advertising your products in, if you submit a link, uh, it'll just show the hyperlink and not uh, any metadata associated with it, like a thumbnail.
So other than um, when naming your product with your store name, making it easier to find, like, so if I'm a shopper and I go to the, mer- the marketplace, I want to find something made by a creator that I like, so I'm going to put their name in with the product. Are there other reasons why we like to have the product name in the title? Uh, the inventory management one's really interesting to me. When we say separate pages, I think what we're talking about is if I go to a merchant store page, you see all of the items and you're able to sort them in a certain way, but you can't have like different sections for different types of like categories. I see. Okay.
Okay, so you want to be able to have multiple stores, but under one account. And one store may specialize in one product versus another. How do we feel about the idea of someone being able to leave a review and it not being verified that they actually purchased it? That's true, you can comment without buying. Would you like the ability to reply to a review? Well, if you can... Comments, you can, yes. Exactly, it's hidden. It's not hidden, it's more like below the fold, per se.
been scrolling back through chat and I saw a suggestion about having the date listed on the page. Uh, what do we mean by that? I see, okay. interested in the bug ticket earlier about the metadata for submitting an, uh, a URL on Discord or Twitter. A common practice where merchants will post links to new items that they have on socials to try to get people to go and take a look. Yeah, I can see how you would need a shorter URL. It's a really interesting suggestion.
Pantera, I will pass that URL along to the destinations team. Uh, we are working actively on destination guide, and I will check in to see if they're making any kind of a report button like that. I'm not sure what you mean by um, is best selling circulated into relevance. If, if you search, if, if you go straight to the marketplace and you go into the product search and you type in a word, um, we do wait like how well that item is selling. And that, that's been the same way it's been for a while, hasn't changed. But it's the top 50,000 items uh, on the marketplace that have a sell order. So if it's not one of the top 50,000 best sellings, then it's at 50,001. And like everything under 50,000 is at 50,001. It was a little bit more complicated than the top 50,000 in the past, but yeah, it was always top 50,000. There was a little bit more data that went into it. Is there a reason why you think that best selling is no longer being circulated into relevance? So if a resident was to go to the marketplace and search in the product search, uh, your item is no longer in the top three. Am I understanding that right? Can you um, DM me the products? Dark over, uh, we have a whole bunch of tickets about ways that we would like to improve favorites and wish lists. Um, we hadn't thought about multiple shopping carts before, but it will be a project and we are a tiny team, so we'll have to get to it. If it 
we agree. 360 snapshots should definitely have more presence in the web. Uh, once we are able to make it happen in the first place, then we'll have the libraries to port into other places. But same answer about Tiny Team. I understand um, having multiple wish lists or favorite lists, uh, but why do you want more shopping carts? Sassy, I saw something else about vanishing of interest tabs. Is that in the viewer or in the web profiles? Because we haven't made updates to web profiles. I it wouldn't supposed to disappear there. Yeah, but did it disappear? Oh, web profiles. Okay, I'll we'll look. Syntax and I will look at that. Is the idea behind the mainland street view where you'd be able to have a better idea of what the location looks like when like, you're trying to visit a store in world? Oh, interesting. Yeah, so the story may no longer actually be at that location. Kira, we also want more people in Second Life. I hope that we can consider the web an extension of your Second Life experience.
Sassy, we like your use case about knowing how to communicate with people. Uh, so there is an internal ticket for that now about knowing what someone's language is. Thank you so much for the great suggestion, by the way. Oh, Neri, did you make the April Fool's one about downloading our consciousness? We loved oh, yeah, that we one. We loved that ticket. Okay, I wanted to give us an extra couple of minutes since I had the technical issues at the beginning, but we are at the end of the user group meeting. Uh, thank you all for attending. Uh, feel free to message me anytime if you have any more suggestions uh, or use the JIRA system. Thanks so much.